Years later, it's a series where I take a look back on past pop culture and cinema and see if films that are 10 or more years older still hold up. Today's episode will be on tape. It was released on November 2nd, 2001. So, does it hold up? What year is it? Whoa. What? <gasps> Thursday. What year? No. What year is it? another film that i don't know anything about i just heard that it was called tape and it had then hawk uma therma and robert sean something an actor that i don't know so there's three actors in this film a one location film in this motel and i know two of the three actors who are now kind of well known everyone knows ethan hawk everyone knows uma therma from pulp fiction and everything like that and this is after pulp fiction so intriguing that she would do the kind of this film it's an indie film very low budget all the money probably went to the actors in this set motel or maybe it was a real motel who knows but it's obviously very low budget and so that intrigued me it is about a group of friends of three who are now 10 years out of their high school years so they're like 28 years old now Ethan Hawk, vince who like clearly is reckless impulsive and hasn't moved on from high school because he wants to know about certain things about john and amy he's still doing drugs and selling drugs just like he was back in the day so he's a character that clearly just still stuck in the past and doesn't want to move on and be more mature john is the one that clearly has matured he's made some mistakes in the past he is now a filmmaker about filming documentaries and whatnot that's why he's here in town to meet up with his old friends he's grown up he's trying to do better things he's trying to move on and do better and clearly the one that's doing well in life or at least well enough to have a film and the way that Ben dressed is clearly like drug addict drug dealer and john is he's an adult now he's grown up moved on and then amy as well is the one that's clearly grown up has a past with john and you know kind of play things up a bit in the room but has moved on kind of she's like an attorney now she has this high paying job and everything so it seems that two of them have moved on for the better doing well for themselves while vince is the one that's lonely kind of hanging out i think he's the one that even caused both of them to come back because he wants to catch up but also not move on because he's stuck in the past the majority of the film is with vince and john first when they meet they're happy they start talking about the past and how young they were and how happy they were at the time and whatnot talking about past relationships and whatnot but then eventually their talks start going into arguments about past mistakes and then they both probably realize at this point why were they friends they probably weren't even supposed to be friends or if they were they only had each other or they had to see five days out of the week during a four-year time frame and so they had to be friends because the way they're talking to each other and maybe it's just been 10 years clearly things have changed and they don't really gel well with each other at all now 10 years later but then they eventually get to talking about amy and how supposedly according to vince that john raped amy and that's a really big kind of assumption and kind of accusation and that's why vince wanted john and amy both to come here because he doesn't know anything he's kind of the one that's creating chaos making stuff up probably because he didn't get to have sex with amy his friend john did and so it's been 10 years he still hasn't moved on from this and only cares about himself and cares about his needs and so he doesn't know anything about that so saying this clearly enrages kind of tries to get him to say he did rape her in a way john is obviously hesitant but gets to the details of how he like pinned her down or something and then slid his dick into her and stuff like that but that is not good enough for vince he really wants him to confess on tape because he has a tape recorder in his back kind of the whole point of this as well setting up his one and probably only friend he has no real friends very lonely which says a lot about vince just kind of pushing people away that are very close to him because he thinks it's funny and he just wants a pat on his back saying that he did the right thing he did something good but really he's just an asshole trying to get involved in someone else's business because it's really not his business at all he doesn't know anything and then amy starts coming into the room and at first it's obviously hey how are you doing all that stuff and it's all very nice but there's clearly a facade between all of them everyone kind of shows their true colors as to why they're really here john was here to just have some fun catch up but once the mention of rape starts coming up about amy he realizes that he messed up and he truly wants to say sorry to amy well at first he doesn't want because vince is being an asshole about it but when he does apologize to her he's very sincere about it despite amy not really believing it until the very end amy is there for punishment she wants her vengeance she is on his revenge trip and since she's an attorney she knows that john is allowed to get away because there's no statute of limitations for rape and so she wants to get punishment or justice in her own way by kind of playing coy and dumb with both the boys but eventually spinning it out being like yeah you did rape me you had your hand over my mouth and it was messed up you messed up and then she eventually calls a cop both on vince and john john for the whole rape thing and then vince for all the drugs that he has and then for vince he's here just to stir up shit from the past and he's the one that clearly hasn't moved on because he wasn't able to sleep with amy and kind of takes no responsibility for himself at all wants to frame and set up his own friend for absolutely no reason well i guess there is a reason but it's for really messed up reasons so despite all the facade at first all of it just kind of comes out vince is like you know what i'm out but then because john is very sincere and you know apologizing saying that he's sorry he's like you know what i'm gonna stay and he does stay vince on the other hand only cares about himself he flushed all those drugs away and all that stuff showing his true colors as to why he brought them both back he realizes at that point that he messed up because amy never called the cop she just wanted to see if both of the boys were being sincere 
sincere or not and apologizing and just kind of showing the true colors she realizes that john did mess up and he is truly sorry so once she goes out she does say good luck with your film kind of acknowledging all right i'll accept it what you did was messed up in the past but good luck with your film all of vince is the one that's suffering at the end of the film because he's just kind of an asshole so i do really like this film group of friends showing up or kind of catching up 10 years later just to see how they were back in high school now two of them have moved on they're mature and realize the past mistakes or at least john and truly sorry about that vince is the one that's like still stuck in the past hasn't moved on still will be stuck because he's still selling drugs very much lonely being very nosy and sticking to people's business and it, i don't know it's just interesting it's not like the greatest film of all time or anything but again it's that one location movie that kind of works well with three actors that play well off of each other and also they're not gonna see each other ever again especially vince i'm pretty sure amy and john they don't want to see him ever again trying to set up john amy knows that he won't change amy now has a husband now so she has no reason to go back to john john is a filmmaker so this was just like a thought you know hey we have mistakes let's end this and move on with our lives and both john and amy did while vince didn't so in the end tate 20 years later still holds up it's a pretty damn good movie i would recommend this film in anyone because i don't think this film is really well known because i'm gonna look it up on youtube right now and there's only one review of it and then there's like obviously clips of the film and then tributes to it but there's only one review of it on youtube so i'm just gonna assume that not everyone really knows about this film so i would definitely recommend people watch this film it's not gonna you know blow your ass out or maybe well who knows if you enjoy like one location small like films like this but i think it's pretty damn good so that's it for me this has been the road so far and thank you for watching